What's up my net soldiers, I'm Net Alliance. Welcome back to part two of Star Wars The Clone Wars Explained. If you guys wanna check out part one, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And for more videos, please wanna like, subscribe, and turn notifications for more. Now with that said guys, let's begin. Chapter 12, Rookies. Our clones from Domino Squad, Fives, Echo, Cut Up, Heavy, and Droid Bait are in charge of guarding a post that stands as one of the only defenses against keeping the Separatists from attacking their homeworld of Kamino. Heavy finds his station boring and longs for more action. Suddenly, a meteor shower enters the atmosphere around their facility. They raise the shields and it appears that everything is back to normal. Only it's soon revealed that that meteor shower was no actual meteor shower. It was Separatist Commando Droids. The Commando Droids rush the station, causing Domino Squad to flee. However, However, droid bait is killed in the attack. The leader droid connects with General Grievous who plans on destroying the Kamido clone factory so that more clones could not be produced for the Republic. Soon, Commander Cody and Captain Rex arrive at the station to discover it overrun with droids. Domino Squad plan to get to them, however, Cut Up is eaten by a random massive eel. And soon, the squad comes face to face with Rex and Cody anyway. So together, the five clones siege the station, destroying all the droids. After the fight, they notice a Separatist fleet is attacking. Grievous sends down a battalion of droids to kill the clones, but Rex devises a plan to destroy the base to get a signal out to the Republic. Unfortunately, his remote for the detonator isn't working, so Heavy decides to stay behind to to allow the others to escape. He then sacrifices himself to destroy the droids and warn the Republic of their invasion. The Republic fleet soon arrives and jumps into action, causing Grievous to retreat and saving the planet of Kamino from certain annihilation. And afterwards, Heavy is honored for a sacrifice and Echo and Fives join Captain Rex's battalion. Chapter 13, Downfall of a Droid. Due to General Grievous taking out many Republic fleets, Master Obi-Wan Kenobi advises Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker to retreat his fleet. However, Skywalker believes he has a plan to defeat Grievous. So he, along with his clan of clone pilots, fly out to take on the General's forces. Anakin and R2-D2 manage to sneak attack Grievous' fleet and win the battle. However, his fighter is damaged as the General escapes. So now, Anakin must find his droid companion to make sure the Separatists are not able to tap into his memory banks and steal the Republic's important information. Chapter 14, Duel of Droids. It's soon revealed that R2-D2 survived the crash and had been picked up by a scrapper. And the scrapper plans on selling the droid to General Grievous for a high cash reward. However, R2 manages to send out his location to Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tana to pick up. And so, Anakin, Ahsoka, Rex, and three other clones assault the Separatist battle station housing R2. The Scrapper discovers a huge amount of Republic information in R2's memory banks and demands a bonus from Grievous. And so, the General obliges by giving him a bonus, and by bonus, I mean a lightsaber through the abdomen. Upon the battle station, Anakin goes off on his own while the rest of the squad attempts to break in through a locked door. However, they are soon attacked by Grievous. Ahsoka fights him off for a bit, but it's clear she doesn't stand a chance, and she is forced to flee. After Skywalker destroys the droids, Captain Rex blows up the station while Anakin and R2 exit, leaving the giant battle station to plummet to the planet below. Chapter 15, Bombad Jedi. Senator Padme Amidala, Jar Jar Binks, and C-3PO head to the planet of Rhodia in order to try and broker a treaty with their leader, Anno. However, Anno admits that he had already joined with the Separatists and betrays Padme. C-3PO and Jar Jar receive Padme's distress call and go to save her. Jar Jar dresses as a Jedi and saves Padme from being killed by Newt Gunray using his new sea creature friend. In the end, it's revealed that Anno and Padme had planned the betrayal all along in order to kidnap Newt, and it worked like a charm. Chapter 16, Cloak of Darkness. After Newt Gunray's capture, Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, and Jedi Master Luminara Unduli are tasked with delivering the Separatist leader to a Republic prison. Count Dooku commands Asajj Ventress to go to the Republic prison and break Newt out. She assaults the prison with her droid battalion and sneaks on board. Ventress soon runs into Ahsoka and during their skirmish, Luminari comes to help. They get separated and Ventress prepares to kill her. However, Ahsoka shows up just in time to save the Jedi Master. Around the same time, while Ventress has both Jedi preoccupied, the captain of the Republic Republic guard Argaius betrays his allies and releases Gunray. After the villains meet up on their escape ship, Ventress betrays Argaius and kills him. And while Gunray gets away, the Republic is still able to track him down and that is their new mission. Chapter 17, Lair of Grievous. After Gunray's escape, Jedi Master Kit Fisto is tasked with hunting him down. He tracks the ship's beacon to a remote planet called Vasic and comes face to face with his old Padawan, a Jedi Knight known as Nadar Veb. They soon discover Count Dooku had tricked them into a trap. 
a trap set for General Grievous to prove himself. Grievous faces Nadar alone and kills him, taking his lightsaber as a fine addition to his collection. Soon, Master Fisto takes on General Grievous alone. He regains Nadar's lightsaber and using it, he manages to hold off Grievous long enough for him to escape. Chapter 18, Dooku Captured. Jedi Knights Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker board a Separatist ship in order to capture Count Dooku. However, Dooku escapes and they follow him. Both of their ships crash on a nearby planet and Dooku becomes captured by a space pirate named Hondo. Hondo offers Dooku to Chancellor Palpatine and they agree to send two Jedi to retrieve him for 1 million credits. Anakin and Obi-Wan are chosen to complete the mission and await Jar Jar Binks arrival to finish negotiations. Chapter 19, The Gungan General. While waiting for Jar Jar Binks, Hondo drugs Jedi Knights Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi and binds them to Count Dooku. Jar Jar arrives and manages to knock out the pirate's power so that Skywalker and Kenobi can regain their lightsabers and take Hondo hostage. And around the same time, Dooku manages to escape his cell and kills anyone who gets in his way. Hondo expects the Jedi to kill him, however, Kenobi sets him free, which in turn causes Hondo to call off his men from shooting them. Then all together, the Jedi, the clones, and Representative Jar Jar Binks head back to Coruscant. Chapter 20, Jedi Crash. Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker and his Padawan Ahsoka Tano head out to assist Jedi Knight Aayla Sakura in battle against the Separatists. Skywalker rushes to her aid, however the cruiser they're on begins to blow, and so Anakin uses the force to save his allies but is injured in the blast. Ahsoka pulls Anakin from the wreckage and they escape into light speed. With Skywalker knocked out, their ship malfunctions and they crash on a remote planet. Captain Rex stays behind to protect the wounded Skywalker while Tano and Sakura look for help. They soon come across a village of lemur-like creatures called Lerman, who do not want to help the Jedi in fear that the Separatists might attack them. However, while they won't help them, they do agree to heal Anakin. And in the end, while Skywalker still needs time to heal, he will survive his injuries. And while they manage to solve that problem, now they have to figure out how to get off the planet. Chapter 21, Defenders of Peace. A few days after saving Anakin Skywalker, a Separatist battleship lands on the remote planet and claims it as their own. Our heroes soon discover a Separatist base and realize that the only way to get off the planet is to steal their shuttle. The Separatist general tests out a new weapon that kills all organic matter but ignores droids. He then tells Count Dooku he plans on using the new weapon on the Lerman. The Jedi soon decide that while the Lerman won't help them, they can't allow the droids to kill the peaceful creatures. So our heroes break into the Separatist fort and steal their shuttle, returning back to the Lerman to prepare for battle. And together, the Jedi, the clones, and the Lerman team up to fend off the droid forces and destroy the new Super Cannon. Chapter 22, Trespass. Jedi Knights Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker are sent to the ice planet of Orto Plutonia to investigate the disappearance of the clone station there. It's initially believed to be a Separatist attack, but upon closer inspection, it is revealed to be a native tribe of furry aliens called Tolls. While Kenobi and Skywalker investigate, it turns out the Tolls are peaceful beings who are forced to fight. Obi-Wan tries to convince Chairman Chicho that they are peaceful, but he is very aggressive towards them. Chairman Cho and the Chieftain of the Tolls have a meeting, and while Kenobi tries to broker peace, Cho disagrees and attacks the Tolls. The Tolls retaliate and a battle ensues, with Cho becoming injured. Captain Rex reluctantly saves the wounded Cho in retreats, but he soon runs into a dead end. Just as the Tolls are closing in, Anakin and Obi-Wan arrive just in time to broker a peace treaty with the Toll Chieftain. And with the Chairman dead, the Chieftain accepts the peace offering and the fighting comes to an end. And that has been part two of Star Wars The Clone Wars Explained. If you guys want to check out my other parts, make sure to check the description below. Also, for more videos from me, there's also different videos down there, so check them out. And uh, for more videos in the future, please remember to like, subscribe, and notifications for more. And with all that said, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Say what you want about George Lucas as a director, but this is one of those cases that shows his brilliance. A somber score plays in the background as we watch our heroes die one by one. I think what's incredibly powerful about this scene is that for the people who aren't Star Wars fans, they don't really know who these characters are, but you feel for them immensely. And there's a part of me that just wants to yell at the screen and try to warn them about what's coming. Obi-Wan, watch out! Obi-Wan! Obi-Wan, no! No, Obi-Wan! Oh, Obi-Wan! Watch behind you! Kayani Mooney! Behind you, Kayani Mooney! They're gonna get him! Oh no! No! Look at him! Nugget, look, look at the- ow, ow. <laughs> Oh! Are you okay? I'm sorry. For anyone curious, she's okay. She's okay. Yeah, she's a good kitty. Anyways, back to the review.
Like I stated before, part five is incredibly important and very well done. And while I understand the gripes, I think for the most part, all of part five is really good.